the important question is not why things happen to us, but how we will respond when they do happen. In this morning's story about a man named Job, life happens. And it happens in a big way. He loses his children, his wealth, and he is inflicted with painful sores that cover his body. The story is not about why these things happen to Job, but rather his response in the face of them. And first, he responded with grief. When we find Job sitting among the ashes, we are being given a glimpse into an ancient expression of grief and anguish. Sitting among the ashes was how grief and sorrow were expressed. If we were to place him within the Kubler-Ross five stages of grief, he, we would discover that he has already moved past the stages of denial, anger, and bargaining, and he is now in the stage of depression. Sitting in the ashes is just too sad to do anything. But the words of his wife seem to be the catalyst that moves him from depression into the fifth and final stage of acceptance. Acceptance that is vocalized in his words, shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? Acceptance that can be summarized with the words, life happens. You see, when life happens, we have a choice. We can face it head on with hope and expectation, or we can crumble in the face of it with despair. If we approach life with hopelessness and despair, then we're more likely to believe in a punishing God, a God who is waiting to zap us for all of our misdeeds, a God who can never be pleased, and if that is your image of God, then you've been listening to too many of the wrong people. It's time to embrace a God that loves you. If we approach life with hope, then we're more likely to believe in a loving and forgiving God. A God who welcomes us into God's family and loves us just as we are. People who feel hopeless in the face of the challenges of life tend to look to God for answers. They want to know what they did to deserve this sort of misery. On the other hand, people who feel hopeful tend to look to God for their strength. They accept that life happens, but they understand that God will support them through it all. And they are usually sources of inspiration for other people. We need to put aside any sort of immature theology that says good things will happen to you if you are a really good Christian. That's simply not true. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, God makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. In other words, life happens. Instead of looking at God <coughs> as a cosmic Santa Claus who rewards us because we have done all the right things, we need to look to God as our refuge and our strength. If this morning's 26th Psalm was written by David, I would like to imagine that it was written early on in his spiritual development. You see, I look at another psalm, the 46th psalm, as a better image of God. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. I have my own paraphrase. It goes like this. God is my refuge 
and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear when life happens. Life is going to happen, whether you like it or not. And when life happens to you, it's my prayer that you can look to God for your refuge and strength too. Amen.